Here's another important topic. This comes from a, this particular slide came, comes from a talk by Dennis Gannon, and that's the so-called long tail of science. So we've discussed in detail high energy physics, we've mentioned astronomy, we pointed out genomics. This is sort of big science. Actually, genomics is sort of halfway between big and small science. But there's also the long tail. What is the long tail? It says there are experiments like Atlas with 3,000 people on one experiment. But there are also tens of thousands of biologists doing exper individual experiments across the country, or tens of thousands of environmental scientists and, and social scientists doing individual experiments. So this is the long tail of science. It's individual people gathering data. The amount of data for any one person may not be so large, but the total adds up, and uh, Gannon estimates here it's around a petabyte per year and growing fast. And uh, <coughs> this is this type of graph here, where you have this uh, hockey shaped graph, is uh, pretty common in all sorts of fields. It says that. Um, it's sort of the 90-10 or 80-20 rule, and exactly what it is, who knows. It says that 20% of the users generate 80% of the data. So that's the things like the 15 petabytes at uh, Large Hadron Collider or the 70 petabytes of medical imagery. But because it's not so obvious that 80% of the data is 80% of the knowledge. Because what counts at the end is what the knowledge, what knowledge comes out of all of this. So. There's a lot of interest in supporting the long tail of science and understanding that better and what it takes to to uh, to process it. And in fact, uh, one amusing feature of the long tail of science, a lot of it is done with Excel or possibly MATLAB. Namely, the technologies that are used in the long tail are relatively simple technologies. 